Hello YouTube and the wider internet. Uh, this is the video that is going to be the first in a series that I intend to make, uh, a book review series. The first book I will be reviewing is With the Old Breed by Eugene Sledge, right there. This is an excellent book. Uh, it was written by a United States Marine who's a member of the 1st Marine Division in the Second World War. He fought in the campaigns at Peleliu and Okinawa. You might have heard about the uh, Peleliu campaign, or excuse me, the Okinawa campaign, but the Peleliu campaign is one that is not advertised by our military political leaders because it was completely unnecessary. Um, that island could have been bypassed uh, by MacArthur's forces on their way to the Philippines, but the plans had already been laid, and so that campaign went into effect. Um, beyond the... Beyond the wider, you know, troop movements and stuff, this is... This book isn't about that. It's not about dates so much and troop numbers. It's about what it's like to be engaged in a conflict where there is no mercy, there is no remorse, where humanity has circled down the drain and found the bottom. Uh, an example of this, and I should have started out this video by saying, if you have a weak stomach, stop watching this video right now because it's about to get rough um the japanese had a habit of mutilating torturing and mutilating american prisoners it's just what they did um and as a consequence the marines did not take japanese prisoners as far as I'm aware, they did not torture them. Um, and there is a moral difference between killing someone and torturing them and then killing them. There is. Um, but the Marines did take t trophies. They, they'd take out teeth, particularly gold teeth. Sometimes they'd cut off ears. Take a skull or two. And... When that mindset is at play, nothing's off limits. For example, in one of these encounters that Eugene Sledge describes, a Japanese infiltrator somehow makes it into the foxhole of one of his fellow Marines, and this Marine is forced to punch through the Japanese Marine's eyeball into his brain and rip out a piece, killing them. Almost inconceivable. But this is what happens. And the way Eugene Sledge describes these experiences, and that's an uncommon experience, uh, the one I just described, but there are more common experiences that Eugene Sledge describes in a way that I haven't actually heard described before. And I haven't experienced myself. I had no military experience. Uh, around the time I could have joined, America was bombing countries for no good reason that I could discern. So I don't have any experience in the battlefield. Thank God. And thank the United States Marines uh, as well. And uh, America's soldiers. At least in those wars that were in the words of Sam Hines, a United States Marine Corps fighter pilot, not a ju not just wars, but they were necessary wars. But uh, when he's describing these things, for example, he describes how these pieces of shrapnel, how they sound coming off of the uh, artillery explosions. They growl, because 
because they're not they're not clean pieces of metal they're jagged pieces of metal just going right past you um and that was his first day in combat so the Peleliu campaign bad deal uh, also it was a coral island so they couldn't bury any of their dead so that got to be an issue but they finally made it off of there after I believe 30 plus days and in Eugene Sledge's very poetic words he says uh, it was almost mutual destruction it was like putting two scorpions in a bottle and having them fight it out. One side was destroyed, the other one nearly so. I believe that's exactly what he says. But he made it off of there, uh, only after losing a fine captain, Captain Haldane, uh, to an enemy sniper. It's one of those things. One of those tragedies of war, you know. I mean, this guy, Haldane, sounds like he could have been he could have actually done something good for the world, you know. And it just kind of puts it in perspective, you know, how many other guys, how many other Captain Hal Danes died, how many Eugene Sledges didn't make it through. But he did make it through, Peleliu. And he went on to Okinawa. The Okinawa campaign lasted three months it was the final campaign of World War II. It took place even after the European campaign had ended. Um, but it was a Japanese home island. Uh, and some of those battles... In fact, it was such a Japanese home island. The Japanese artillery training camp facility was on Okinawa. And at times, the Marines were fighting through the very artillery range where these Japanese soldiers had trained. Let me repeat that. The Marines were fighting through the exact same training facility, training range, that these artillerymen had trained on. So that would be like, I don't know, what American... whatever American uh, training camp, fort, uh teaches a majority of our artillerymen. That would be like if uh, a foreign adversary had to fight through that. So they had that ground pretty well sighted in. In fact, they had it so well sighted in they could call in machine gun fire from invisible positions. They would put them so here's a slope of the hill. They put it on the reverse slope. The machine gun on the reverse slope. Right around here. Just below the crest of the hill. So you couldn't actually uh, see the muzzle flash of the machine gun. And they would pre-sight the angles of fire. So they could call in suppression fire from enemy positions. And these machine guns were using indirect fire against them. That's how well these Marines were sighted in. Or the Japanese had these Marines sighted in. Horrifying. Uh, then he goes and describe, you know, things like uh, his you know, a captain who doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Um, he called him Mac. He has the good, the decency to not label these, by his own admission, shoddy Marines by name. But there were some, and they at times came very close to compromising the safety of their unit. And there was one particular officer who, more than compromising the physical safety of his unit, he compromised their moral integrity. Because he would do things like find Japanese corpses and piss in their mouths. That's not good for morale. At another time, they were on a night patrol. They left this moronic officer to his own devices while they went out and, you know, kind of took a little route on this patrol. They hear firing 
from this guy's position. They come back and he's taking pot shots at the teeth of a like a horse skeleton or dog skeleton or something. Absolute idiot. Absolute idiot. But he was in charge. Um, yeah, I could go on, really. It's, it's just, it's an honest account of war. Written by a man who, and he has footage also, you can find on the web, Eugene B. Sledge, he did interviews. By everything I can tell, and I think it'll become very obvious to the reader of, with the old breed, that this was a moral man forced into incredibly immoral circumstances. Forced into a conflict that almost superseded nation states and became a Darwinian struggle for supremacy. But if you have the time, and if you have the intestinal fortitude, I highly recommend With the Old Breed by Eugene Sledge. It'll really, it'll shape your opinions.